The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your host. And of course, it only matters where me and you are, since we can be anywhere at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So what do we have? Well... A little bit of rock and roll, a little bit of country, uh, a little bit of up, a little bit of down. Um, spies uh, went down to what, 391 up to 396 or 393 now. Uh, the s and P's up about seven points. Crude oil uh, was down about two and a half, three bucks. It uh, was up about uh, two bucks. It's out uh, at uh, 102.80 now, solidly above 100. Probably the big news is uh, that uh, uh, with a swipe of a pen, uh, we don't have any more uh, oil expiration. I don't know, uh, I, when I read the article this morning on that, I don't know if that legally can stand, especially after the EPA ruling. Um, and, of course, after the defeats uh, at the Supreme Court on some of the other rulings where the government actually has to uh, come up with a reason that there's an emergency. They can't just uh, wave their wand. I don't know if that's going to uh, hold water, but uh, probably can delay any new drilling for a little while. Uh, so when we look at uh, some of the big movers out here today on earnings, uh, probably wasn't a good day to get that kind of news um, at the same time. Let me get the chart up here. Uh, BKR. Okay, R E says. Uh, Baker Hughes, I tend to post their uh, rig report every Friday in the den when I remember to to put it in there, but it gives me at least some kind of big idea. If you go to the website, you can subscribe to it too. Uh, and uh, anyway, uh, pretty nice rig report, but uh, yeah, you don't want to kind of miss and then have the president say that we're not going to allow any more drilling in the United States. So yeah, uh, bad news, probably why uh, we started to see crude get back over 100 in the last couple of days. But, uh, well, in the short term, you got to think uh, that any kind of bounce in crude uh, could be at least 50% of the previous high. That gives you about one, what, 110, 112, something like that uh, in crude. And that's not going to make uh, everybody else very happy. Uh, certainly going to hurt the economy with. Uh, I think the last year, the best estimate I saw was that the average household paid $2,600 more uh, for energy over the last year than they did the year before, uh, which no one, again, is happy about. But uh, more to the point in the economy, uh, that's $2,600 not going to somewhere else uh, like chips and technology or uh, Ross uh, closed stores or something like that. So if they wanted to take a lot of cash out of the market really quickly, uh, certainly that is something that can be done. Okay. We can see. Uh, anyway, uh, we'll go through the rest of uh, big earnings today, but I thought that was, if you were talking about one that was really kind of moving on news, that was probably the one that eh, didn't want to come out with uh, rough numbers and then have uh, uh, basically a moratorium on drilling in the United States, too. Uh, to And somebody in the den said something, but I would say better that we have it, not need it, the need it and not have it. That's how nuclear wars are started. 
because the next one will be, right? So we want to be very careful that we don't have any more wars for oil um, or have to uh, uh, depend on the kindness of evil strangers. Okay. Anyway, uh, just a thought there. What do we have here? About three minutes left. Um, also in the news today, and I didn't have a chance to uh, – Chipotle, CMG, right? I uh, saw them talking about that just before. Doesn't seem to be hurting them. Uh, in the news for labor issues with unions, unclear whether they were going to close the place before or not. Um, your previous high had 288,000 shares uh, back on the 5th of July, 138,000 here today. So I don't know. Um, let me know. If anybody has any uh, deep insight to this, you can give me a call today at 877-927-6648. All I saw was some kind of store up in Maine. Um, does that really affect Chipotle people? Kind of like Starbucks. Uh, they had kind of the same thing. Uh, the roar on that has kind of died down also. Uh, on Starbucks, though, as I s noticed earlier, uh, what you didn't like is the very light volume at previous highs. You do have a doji sitting out here today on 3.7 million shares. Yesterday, you attacked uh, the previous uh high at 82.87, had 30 million shares with 6 million shares. So uh, some of these uh, bounces starting to get rather long in the tooth out here. And of course, uh, we've got a little bit of news in gold. That is, it's dipped just a hair underneath 1,700. I don't know if you can make a great deal about what's going on in that right now. I think a lot of people have been uh, looking at oil as a better place to park their cash in the short term, um, and I don't have any deep insight. I have some theories, uh, probably thinly uh, thought out theories on maybe somebody like Putin selling his gold to keep the war going and maybe uh, other countries doing the same. So maybe, you know, once you get through all that or if, if uh, God forbids, peace breaks out, um, maybe that would change the complexion of gold. But uh, I don't see anything in the charts or anything else out here that really changes a great deal. Email me at path at tfnn.com, as so many of you humble listeners have. Uh, and uh, what else do we have out here? Oh, we got a good uh, news day, uh, for history anyway. And see what else do we have out here. I think that's kind of it. Uh, on the top end, we got about 50 seconds left. Go back through. Um, yeah, probably the big surprise out here is Datadog, which we'll get into after the show, but kind of the, one of the big winners out here, up about 8%. Um, a kind of bogus upgrade, but they may have caught a lot of people short this stock. Uh, certainly had uh, somebody stepping in yesterday, probably knew that the uh, self-serving uh, upgrade was coming to 178 on Datadog. Um, got a couple of questions on uh, some other stuff in this sector, so we'll answer that today, uh, along with uh, the movers and shakers from earnings this morning, and then we'll go into earnings tonight. We'll be back in a minute. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16-year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. As we return, History repeats, kind of, but more, a better description is that it rhymes. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. Of course, on this day, we had something that was uh, rather interesting. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Yes, it was. Uh, Eagle. The Apollo 11 lunar module successfully lands in the area of the moon known as the Sea of Tranquility. Upon landing, Neil Armstrong utters the now famous phrase, the eagles landed. About six hours later, while setting foot on the moon, he utters an even more famous phrase. That's one step, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. And of course, uh, we have no more excuses, do we? That was the uh, probably the best and worst day in mankind because from then on, everybody could say, well, we put a man on the moon. Why can't we do this or that or the other? But, of course, uh, probably for a long time going to be the biggest accomplishment. Um, kind of hard to think that uh, since, what, 1972, we haven't been back. And... Uh, just a handful of people have ever been on a foreign body. Uh, but uh, eh, 1969, a lot of neat stuff came out of all the effort that came in to build that. And uh, eh, we still use all that stuff every day. But if uh, the chip uh, industry had anything to say that its genesis came from was, of course, the push to make small computers for uh, the capsule, as they like to call it, and the uh, lunar lander, a lot of other stuff. But, uh, eh, I do digress. Okay, what's back, get back uh, to once where we belonged. Uh, as we said, uh, I was uh, showing data dog, forgot to put my charts up. That's on me. Had a nice bounce. Uh, but again, uh, like I've talked about, uh, a lot of these stocks, uh, lower highs, higher lows, 
and then moves back into it. You want to wait for the breakout one way or the other, although I suspect uh, we have a lot of that coming on the downside. We'll see how the day comes out. Real uh, tough uh, resistance around these levels, even though the market started slide forward. We had a couple of hiccups during the day. Both of those, uh, after the fact, found out that there were some giant uh, sell orders, block orders, uh, that were going through the S&Ps. And so, you know, you get, a, you get a kind of a nice run. Big block order comes out and takes the uh, S&Ps with it. Um, tries to run again, you get the same thing again. Some people have been attributing it to news, and I'm not exactly sure because I look at uh, the news feed in real time. I don't see anything that really comes across that would make a lot of, uh, of uh, buyers or sellers in the market um, decide to move at all one time. I, th I just think it's those big uh, orders flowing through. And uh, the previous one around, what was it, 1230 or so, I found incredibly interesting because uh, I was looking at my email and then a, a thing popped up that said, the bottom is in. And it was from CNBC. And the, and the uh, spies went down two points almost instantly. So I always thought that, I always think that stuff's kind of interesting. 877-927-6648 as we go into the rest of the market. Uh, could be some distribution. It just looks to me like those are really big orders rolling through and all at once. So someone is getting out. Now, could that be uh, the uh, uh, one of those big hedge funds that was having problems? And as soon as they decided to, as soon as the bounce was there, they decided to try to get out or said that they would get out to their broker that was on the other end of that line. Um, don't know, but you know, maybe people are just taking the money. Uh, maybe uh, the uh, gentleman from California who's uh, wired into buying and selling in the market uh, via Congress, uh, maybe he is starting to sell. Maybe those are his huge orders. You never know. But uh, certainly uh, we've got that. Now on the earnings front, we've got Abbott Labs. Not much movement out here today. You wouldn't hardly know. Not a lot of volume. Uh, other stocks out here that I thought of interest, um, really negative conference call on ASML, uh, saying that uh, they had uh, production problems. Doesn't seem to matter, though. Um, they are back up with some decent volume up to the June 27th high. So we can keep an eye on that. Uh, we already talked a little bit about uh, Baker Hughes and, of course, the gap down on that one. Um, did break through the previous low that had 6.4 million shares with 20 million shares, but we may not close underneath that level. Uh, other stocks of interest out here was uh, uh, CMA. And this one had a nice little streak back up, but gave it almost all back this morning. Uh, Comerica. Uh, let's see what we have here. Financial products operates through commercial banks, retail, wealth management, financial segments. So kind of interesting that that kind of came up here and gave it up today. And, of course, uh, we had to uh, you know, get to Netflix here. Um, very interesting. Uh, sold off almost instantly earlier in the morning. Got to 216 today. Uh, got to what's the low of the day out here? Uh, did uh, dip down to 200 and 10 cents the low of the day. Um, but uh, I don't know if there's a great deal else going on in this other than a lot of people are just sure that it's time to buy it. Um, the numbers weren't that good. Uh, they lost a million subscribers, but a lot of people thought they'd lose two. So maybe you die from blood loss in two days instead of one. Don't know. Um, not a big fan of this sector quite yet. As I said, I think a lot of these uh, productions need to dwindle down. I did think that it was kind of interesting that we saw uh, some data coming out from third-party sources and that half, almost half of all the views – for Netflix over the last uh, four weeks, all came from one show, and that's Stranger Things. So we do tend to have 
kind of a uh, consensus in the market for what we're watching. Uh, my thought was this is season four of the thing, and a lot of people think it's kind of long in the tooth. But uh, kind of the same thing with uh, Game of Thrones on HBO or uh, Sopranos. Yeah, does something else come along? But generally, it's not exactly at the same time. So I don't know what to say about this. You've got a lot of volume in it today, but a lot of people were short this thing. Um, numbers were not that good. So maybe just a lot of people on the short side of Netflix. We'll be back in a minute. Uh, again, uh, email me at path at tfnn.com. Email, uh, email me at path at tfnn.com. Call me at 877-927-6648. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And hopefully we're on. I didn't get anything uh, for my audio on the back side. So all I went to was uh, dead air. 877-927-6648. Okay. I did check my settings and no. Yeah, I didn't hear the music. Okay. So that's generally the cue for me to wake up. Uh, anyway, uh, no movement on the TLT. Don't see much in that. CCJ, eh, still got a little movement in that. We'll take a look at it for Joe. Ch -ch -ch. 
Yeah, like I said, uh, what was it, Monday? Looked to me like this was going to come up to about 25, right in the middle of this gap down. That had some decent volume, about 8.7 million shares. Um, you'd had a nice high up here at 28.28. Uh, so I suspect you're going to go sideways here for a little while, gain some steam, but it's hard to not think that nuclear energy uh, will prevail in the rest of the world, even if it doesn't here. Okay, I got a question to look at the usual suspects too, too quickly. So we'll look at that. Uh, back up above uh, the previous high on Apple, uh, the 104, 104 million share high goes back to 151.74 on June 1st. Uh, into it today with 44 million. So we're kind of at this inflection point, and a lot of the stocks did come down on. Uh, heavy volume some of them came up on okay volume like apple but certainly it looks like it's starting to run out of steam here today with uh, challenging the previous high on half of its previous volume at least so far today maybe more comes in but i don't think there's going to be enough to come in more stocks uh, on the uh side of uh of uh, lower highs, uh, higher lows is uh, Microsoft. It continues that. It's really kind of at the high end of this triangle now. So does it bust out uh, or continue uh, going sideways in here for a few more days? Uh, kind of tough to say. Eh, but uh, we shall see. We looked at Netflix. Um, Google was kind of interesting. It showed up uh, as... Uh, oh, let me do this. Uh, draw here. Uh, it showed up uh, on my list of highly shorted stocks, which is kind of interesting. But uh, I don't know if you see much out here in this today, but certainly um, you got just a channel. I mean, this, talk about uh, channeling stocks. Um, just kind of hanging out here at mid uh, 113s, 114s in this area without a lot of signal. Anyway, lots of shorts in this uh, comparatively for a big stock. But I think that happened when uh, the reverse split came back in. It kind of added a bunch. I'm wondering how many people stayed in after the split. Uh, so let's go through the rest. Anyway, we looked at ASML. Uh, broker, Datadog, uh, Interactive Brokers, see what these guys are saying. They did test the previous low on eh, just uh, a skosh less volume from May 12th uh, on May on June 14th. Just a big doji out there today on their earnings. Yesterday, I said the company that I was going to be most interested in uh, was uh, J.B. Hunt on what they're saying on transportation and the supply crisis that continues. I could tell when I went into the store yesterday and a uh, couple of the bays at uh, Walmart store were completely empty. And they were just putting back in eggs and stuff out of being uh, out of them for three days. There's all that segment in there. And I'm not exactly sure why I didn't get to talk to the guy. But um, I talked to somebody else and they all said, yeah, we just haven't had any of this and that and the other and sausage. We've been out for three days. And I thought, well, that's kind of interesting. I hadn't been to the store for a while. Anyway, uh, I don't know. Man, the... the these guys were talking kind of like the Fed on one side. On one hand, we everything's great. On the other hand, we're having problems keeping uh, drivers because uh, they're getting poached. Um, so maybe that's a good thing overall for them anyway. Don't know enough about the uh, over-the-road truck driving business. Maybe someone else does, and we'll give us a call. But uh, just an inside day on J.B. Hunt today. Okay, what else do we have? Uh, Lydia Motors. What is it? Lithia Motors. Um, down a little bit. Of course, uh, Tesla uh, tonight after the bell, right? I think that's it. So we'll look at that. You're down today with a lot of volume. 
and I don't know if this is people trying to get out in front of it. Um, one of the problems I don't think a lot of people have talked about, um, it's happened a little while ago for Tesla, and, and at least in the United States, they've lost uh, the um, subsidies that go to them. Uh, even General Motors is going to lose their subsidies for EVs, I think, at the end of the year. I'm going to have to go back and look at that. But I think uh, they are a it, it, very complicated thing that they did in the legislation. But as soon as you get to so many cars, then the clock starts ticking to the end of the, I think it was the calendar year. But now I'm going to have to go back and look at it. Uh, anyway, um, I think Ford has at least another year which may be very good for them if they start getting the volume in the trucks out. Uh, some of the other ones are out there, but the clock starts ticking when you start selling, and there's kind of like uh, two things, which is time and volume, that sets the end of those uh, uh, ones. So, you know, especially if you kind of come late to the party, you may be able to have a car, if you took the time to make it really good, that's very competitive and also gets uh, those wonderful... Uh, uh, dollars off from the government uh, to push it. But anyway, Lithium Motors uh, down today. A lot of volume out there, but eh, not the end of the world either. Still in the trading zone. Let's take a quick look at Tesla. Uh, very hard to figure out uh, what's going on with them. Of course, a, a great deal is going to be what they say about production in China. In fact, I'd say 80% of what goes on with Tesla has to do with uh, China and production in China for that part of the world. So probably the good news, uh, I think we have a couple of gaming stocks from Macau that are coming out in the next few days too. Um, I saw that the, they were reopening them, I think, today or tomorrow. So we've got a little bit of that going on. The question is whether or not uh, they're going to allow uh, the factories uh, in China to start re uh, reproducing, producing uh, uh, Tesla cars to themselves. So we'll probably hear about that tonight. I'm sure uh, some enterprising uh, random act of journalism and or um, uh, a, a market professional will ask if they do not, that's probably a good sign that they don't want to know the answer to that question. Uh, as a good attorney, always says, never ask a question you don't know the answer to already. I kind of think that that applies in some of these conference calls. We'll be back in a minute. FNN has been your trusted source of analysis for bonds, metals, stocks, commodities, and options for years. And we are happy to announce that we are bringing that same caliber of analysis for the Forex market. Teddy Kekstat has 30 plus years of experience in Forex trading, commodity risk management, Forex hedging, volatility, and so much more. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with elite coverage of all major currency pairs, including the DXY, Euro Dollar, Pound Dollar, Aussie Dollar, dollar yen, dollar Swiss franc, and so much more. Teddy will recommend specific trades when the market presents them and provide updates throughout the week when warranted. For the month of July, inaugural members to the Tiger Forex Report will receive 25% off the monthly subscription for as long as they're subscribed. Just use promo code TEDDY25 to lock in the added savings. This offer is good only for the month of July, so do not miss your opportunity to save on the Tiger Forex Report. TFNN, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. back question about uh, going long ung well you're right at resistance so kind of a uh, cow has left the barn already thing here you probably had to buy much lower uh again i think there's a lot of movement for this going on um this fall and i wouldn't get too wrapped up about losing a couple bucks now uh or uh, being out of it again i you get late august you tend to get some very good prices on natural gas um, as far as volume, it uh, doesn't look very good. You gapped down on the 14th of June, did so on 18.3 million shares. You're up into it with 5 million shares now. Uh, probably part of the big pop today, of course, is the uh, uh, anti-drilling um, executive order. And, of course, uh, that makes uh, all that stuff go up. As I said before, average uh, price of uh, our average uh, household is spending $2,600 more in energy than it did just a year ago. Uh, the question is, will we be spending four grand more, 4,500 grand uh, more, 4,500, 4,500 more than we did two years ago, a year from today? And it kind of looks like it. I don't think anything's going to slow down uh, the rate of uh, higher fuel prices uh, unless we have a change of policy. But uh, I would say 98.9999% is uh, policy decisions uh, affecting what's going on in natural gas at the moment. So anyway, doesn't look good on the chart. You got almost no volume into the gap down. Maybe you get to 28 bucks. Uh, and maybe you pull back a little bit. I don't think you're ever getting back to 18 again. Uh, but uh, could you get to 25 to 22? Uh, you might on a, a general market kind of malaise or sell-off. We're, uh, what, seven days away from the next at least half a point uh, percentage rate hike to 1% uh, interest rate hike, depending on what the Fed does. And an uh, interesting number that I did hear this morning or see in one of the articles is exactly what does 1% mean for interest rates on credit cards. Uh, every 1% on credit cards is $6 billion a year to the consumer. Again, uh, money that is not going to go into anything else uh, but paying off the credit cards if people keep their interest rate or their uh, balances where they are today. Um, yeah, we've seen what 175 crude before, so nothing new. I'm just wondering whether or not uh, uh, we'll see kind of a repeat of uh, France uh, uh, circa just before the late 1800s. Uh, if we do see ten dollars uh, a gallon gas, uh, I don't think uh, let them eat cake is going to be able to pass this time. 
Uh, to do, okay. So, yeah, very, I mean, right now, I wouldn't be long natural gas. I'd be a seller here. And uh, as I said, you almost always get a fairly good place to put in. And my guess would be that you want to go long natural gas somewhere around late August and uh, hang on to it probably through March next year. If you can, uh, if you want to trade it, probably different, but probably one of the better trades will be if if energy keeps uh, climbing and we're not allowed to actually produce any here in, more in the United States, you got to think that could UNG be 40, 50 bucks by the end of uh, uh, next spring? I don't think that's out of the uh, realm of possibility. Uh, okay, what else do we have out here? Look at CCJ, had a question about that. A uh, question about. Uh, GDXJ, the juniors, then we'll look at the seniors too. Is there anything else out here? Just kind of going sideways, not a lot of volume today. 1650 kind of rings a bell on where I've looked at gold before. I just haven't seen much out here that says that uh, we want to be around that. I haven't checked the price of gold in the last few minutes. Uh, 1700, so kind of hanging out here. You know, I would love to see a real washout, like $50 down and then $50 back real quick. Just something that just ran everybody out of gold and scared the bejesus out of them. And I mean, just gap down or something like that. Something that really uh, washed out the weak hands in the market um, and maybe made some kind of buyable low in it. Right now, just kind of meandering around down here, I don't see anything that really looks that good. As far as the gold miners, yeah, you're down. You don't have a lot of volume today. Yeah, 4200 bucks. Uh, a lot of that would depend on the dollar, and I don't see a lot changing in that. Do I have that up? I do not. Let's see if I have it in this. Okay, no. I do not. Let's see. Uh, I thought yeah, yeah let me see here take a quick look at the dollar forex okay come on Mr. Forex there we go and Mr. Dollar D DX, okay. You got to 107.10, uh, 106.96 uh, on the dollar. That is the basket of uh, the U.S. dollar to six other foreign currencies. So eh, down a dime, down 13 cents off the high. Not a lot going on out there. I think a lot of people are whistling past the graveyard and thinking the gold or the dollar is topped out. But uh, we shall see tomorrow with uh, numbers from the EU uh, on uh, their interest rate. Uh, yep, always interesting. Okay. Uh. Okay. Uh, oh. I was going to go through that, and somebody just reminded me. I think we looked at everything out here except WIT, which we'll look at, and then we'll get into uh, the earnings for tonight. I've got to accept that. Um, YPRO, yeah, I don't think there's anything in here. You're going back to test the lows. Uh, a lot of times at 5 bucks, you find some fairly stiff uh, support, and that is because, of course, most places won't let you short a stock below 10 bucks and some below five. So you tend to see uh, fairly strong uh, support at both those levels on the downside just because shorts can't hammer a stock any longer. Uh, again, not much going on here in Tesla. I have no idea. It's very hard to tell. I've looked at the Chinese papers. Uh, converted to English. I don't read Chinese. And you really don't get a real good sense on what's happening over there. Uh, again, I, you kind of know what a lot of people are going to do. It's very hard to know what one person like Zing is going to do. Uh, after the uh, bell tonight, 
Abbott Labs, CSX. That's the other one. We'll look at that when we come back because I think that's going to be very interesting. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC Capital Market Assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. As we return, Coder in the Den asks, uh, do you have any market statistics? Uh, on how often a stock's response to earnings report is within the market maker's prediction, uh, put call ratio, about 80%. They're fairly accurate um, of having it come in there. And generally, uh, on a $100 stock, that's plus or minus five. So you can pretty much, I, just a rule of thumb without even looking at the all the Greeks and stuff, uh, unless it's a, a dormant stock, in which case you're probably not paying attention to it anyway. Uh, but uh, yeah, about 80%. Um, they pretty much have to, in options, come up with the same thing that they have in paramutual wagering. And that is you have to, 80% is about break even, 85%, and you make a bunch of money. So yeah, there is that. Uh, as I said, uh, uh, CSX uh, actually... Uh, after the bell tonight, one of the other ones that probably not so much what they say and the reaction 
uh, it, but I want to hear what they're saying about uh, transportation costs and a lot of the reasons why stuff isn't getting where it should be. Um, and maybe they'll have some insight on what we should know uh, to color our thinking going forward. Uh, as I said uh, last night with the transportation company and some of the others, they're giving us kind of a flavor out there. It's even in a bear market, there's some stocks that do well. So you've got uh, a tale of two cities. And the question is, uh, is the bad city going to drag down the good city or is the good city going to drag up the bad city part of uh, what's going on? And, and you know, it's going to be the S&P stocks. I don't think that there's a big problem with the NASDAQ, per se, on interest rates. But certainly uh, companies like uh, that have a lot of infrastructure like oil drilling and trains and planes, a lot of that stuff. Uh, that's what I'm interested to see what they think happens in the next three months. We'll see you tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Sell when you can, not when you have to. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible.